our truth walking along, he stops and he looks up above the camera. He says, oh no, I've done did it now. The cameraman or camera person, sorry, circles round Truth, ends up behind Truth, seeing what Truth is looking at up above him. It's a big sign that reads, Welcome to Austria. Oh. Well, I'm here in Austria. Where's everybody at? Luckily, I'm an ugly man, so the fact this microphone is right in my face does not matter at all. Welcome to Pitches for Revolution 2024. It's the show where myself, Andrew Dingle, and Frazier Poitier will come to the table with three ideas each about what we want to see happen on this pay-per-view at the weekend. But remember the crucial rule, everybody, as I've just said there before saying it, yep. it's not what we think's going to happen, it's, it's what, what we want to happen! Yeah, I broke the microphone stand, so we're having to do with this one here. Uh, apologies if you do like me face. I don't know who I'm saying that to, but there we go. Fraser, you kick us off with your first pitch of three. Okay, no pressure then. To start off, I'm going to go with something involving Sting and Darby Allen. Uh, so I have it that the Young Bucks beat Sting and Darby in the retirement match. It's a no for me. It's a no, okay. Well, following the match, an emotional Sting sits in the center of the ring. You know, the crowd is chanting, thank you, Sting, doing the whole, he's bowing out, it's his last time he gets his, his end sort of speech in front of the crowd. He takes the mic to address the crowd, he says that Darby's going to be one of the greatest AEW stars of all time, um, and he concludes, you know, he's had, he's had a pretty good run himself. At this point, the roster come out to stand on the stage and to sort of clap him and, and let him do a wee bow. He then rounds out the promo, saying that he's coming home to his family. Darby raises his arm, but Sting hits him with a scorpion death drop. He then whaps out some face paint and does the Joker face paint on his face like he did back in TNA. And then he says, maybe Sting might be retired, but Stung is only just beginning. And then he floats up to the rafters and then he sort of stalks Darby for the next few months. And Sting isn't, re well, Sting is retired, but, but Stung is only beginning. If you stopped talking... Yes. Before you said the word stung, stung. Yeah. it's a yes. Everything that came after the yeah, word yeah. stung, you can go to hell. Okay, okay. No, you're not about the floating up to the, the rafters? No. I mean, that was, he's, not, oh, okay. he's not on strings or anything. He just, it's just <laughs> stung himself. Yeah. My favorite part was where you said stung is only just begunning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, as, as sort of Ross just said there, I was really oh. on board uh, with everything up until... Perhaps the, uh, the, the, yes, the, the stung part. Stung. Um, because do you know what? Part of me thinks for, for, with all the stuff that's happening with Ric Flair and also the fact that when this whole sort of rivalry got uh, off the ground and Sting being like, yes, I'm all in, kind of mm -hmm. makes me think that it might extend to all in being like mm -hmm. his final show. Although where it's happening in Greensboro would be a nice way to close it all as well with sort of the, the match that he had with Flair and that. Um... So it's an on the fence it's from the me fence. because it was really good yeah, up yeah. to that point. It's a wonderful cheesecake. You've got a lovely to, yeah. buttery biscuit base. Nice. The bit on top of the buttery biscuit base is there. But then for some reason, you've put a massive stinking turd on the top of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted to keep the, the, the honorable Sting has retired. Fair. St stung's Which, here. Yeah, so stung is here instead. Yeah, yeah. It's just unnecessary. It is. <laughs> That's that's what I want to happen. Fair enough, Fraser. Wow. You're wow. a weird guy. Andrew! <laughs> oh, Here we go. Moving away from Sting and going over to some meaty madness, everybody. Now, we don't know who's going to be in this meat madness match yet, other than three people. We've got Lance Archer, we've got Wardlow, and we've got Powerhouse Hobbs. But, right, let's just say it's a big hoss battle royale, and to fill it out, we're going to go with Miro, Brody King, Tomohiro Ishii, yeah. The Butcher, Dutch from The Righteous, Jake Hager, Toa Leona, we've got John Silver, the meat man himself, and the meatiest of all the men, Dan Housen, right? He can be wearing a little paper hot dog hat, maybe even push a, maybe even push a cart to a stay on paper, paper. What, sorry? A little paper hot dog hat. 
You know, what, like where there's like the, the dispensary. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. you dare bastardize the concept <laughs> that is the meat madness match. Well, well we're, we're going to get there, right? So the bell rings and you got 12 big, burly, blooming boys all colliding like hams in a tumble dryer. Absolutely. Dan Housen obviously goes out first, though, with his attempted curse on the spooky Dutch amounting to absolutely naff all. John Silver soon follows, as does the butcher, Dutch, Leona, Ishii Hager, and Lance Archer. So now we're down to the final four. You've got Miro, Brody King, Hobbs, and Wardlow. Miro and King have a stiff fight with King eliminating Miro and causing him a further crisis of faith. And then you can get a nice little Miro and House of Black feud there, uh, which I'm, I'd quite like that. You get yeah. that little bit there for free, right? Yeah. So it comes down two, three, and it's uh, it's just a big game of man conkers right now, right? <laughs> With the crowd <laughs> screaming about meat and chops and applesauce and other stuff. I don't really know. I'm vegan, so I don't know what, <laughs> what, what people chant these days. Uh, so, King and Hobbs end up teeing off whilst Wardlow is down, but Wardlow rises to his feet, he shakes with anger, and he eliminates both men at the same time. And as his music plays, Wardlow looks down the camera and says to those at home, I told you, this means war, like in his mm. theme song. So later in the night, we get the AW World Championship match between Joe Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page. Now, after an absolute clinic, Swerve hits the JML driver on Hangman and goes for the pin. But Joe crushes both men with a chair, throws Swerve out, and steals the pin on Hangman Page. There's no DQ in a three-way after all, is there, eh? So you got Joe celebrating in the ring, and that's when Wardlow's music hits, and Big Mike himself comes out with a face like a smacked bum-bum. He walks down the ramp, and he shoulders Swerve out the way, because he's dead sad, you know? Both men feel like they deserve the title after all. Then he gets into the ring, and he grabs a mic, and he says, Bet you thought I wasn't coming for you, eh? Bet you thought Adam Cole was on something when he said I was coming for my championship. Well, I don't care if you and the management think I'm a joke, Joe, because because when we get in that ring, the fans may chant, Joey's going to kill you. But mark my words, I am going to kill you and take what is rightfully mine. Joe slowly nods at Wardlow as Swerve looks on from the ramp. Now, so I've got little things here, right? I was going to say, because you've you've cast aside yeah. the we, main characters. Well, this is the thing. So we've got a nice couple of feuds up, I thought, here. So Wardlow carries on his momentum after his promo was phenomenal last week. Mm -hmm. I thought it was super, super good. Uh, and then you've still got the Adam Cole title switch teasing as well there. Uh, this can also set up for Wardlow versus Joe and Wardlow versus Swerve too, maybe. Perhaps another three-way, maybe. I don't know. I'm not too sure. Plus Swerve being cheated out of the win then also just builds him up further to finally hopefully do it down the line too. Mm. Oh, that's mm. quite a, a, a good way to get Wardlow back as a big threat because mm. he's sort of, I, 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 like you said, that promo last week was really, really strong and sort of re-established him but I think this would be a really good way to to do that with actual in-ring stuff mm. especially when in a, uh, going through a meat madness meat match whatever madness. that is going to be um, yeah, I, I'm giving that a thumbs up. Oh, thank you. I'll give it a yes. Yeah, I know it's very, I know it's very plain and on the nose. It's a long game, though, isn't it? It it's is. A long That's game. what it is. Can't have everything all at once, can we? No, we can't. Can no, we? No. And I want Wardlow to do it. So do I. I genuinely that do. That promo could have been cut any at any point over the past two years, mm -hmm. and I'm glad it happened finally. Mm -hmm. Let's just hope very, very good. carry it on with good things. Yeah. Go on then, Ross. Right, I'm going to go for the main event title match. I guess, no, not the the, the title match, not the main mm -hmm. event. I guess it stings yeah. the main event, isn't he? Uh, a few notes before we get into this pitch. Hangman doesn't want Swerve to be champion. If he can't be champion, he just doesn't want Swerve to be champion. That's been his mantra over the last little while. Swerve needs to beat Hangman to prove on his own, oh, sorry, beat Hangman on his own to prove that he is better than Hangman. He came close to it in the time limit draw, and he didn't quite get the job done, and since then, Hangman hasn't let him forget that. Hangman's fine. He escaped without losing. So, I've made a pitch for the end of the title match. It'll come about after Swerve has failed after several near falls on Hangman. Ooh, it's revolutionary stuff, wouldn't mm. you say? Uh, with Hangman just about hanging on. I want to see Samoa Joe battering the pair of Swerve and Hangman because he's fed up of being in the middle of their bollocks, and their bollocks is getting in the way of those two lads who aren't the champion doing good things in this match because that are obsessed with each other. Crucially, though, I would like to see Swerve get a steel chair and Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 17 hangman Adam Page because he's that desperate to beat him. 15-odd chair shots into this beating. Sorry, hangman. You can take it. You're a big, strong boy. <laughs> Samoa Joe, who's been knocked out and on the out on the periphery for a little while there. He hops back in the ring and locks on a shoot coquina clutch out of nowhere. 
What? Shoot one. I just love yeah. it every time you shoot Kikina Clutch. Out of nowhere. But yeah, 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 yeah. With the noise effect as well, the sound effect <laughs> as well. Eventually, Swerve passes out. The heartbreak for Swerve not getting the job done. Hangman is brown bread because of the beating at the hands of Swerve. And Joe saw his moment and escaped as champion. I'm pitching this to happen because I'd like to see a heel Hangman coming out of this match. Mm. Good and proper because he's been sort of flirting with being heel mm. without going all the way. I think a beating like a drubbing like this will bring out the full heel in Hangman. He can go on to challenge Joe for the title at Double or Nothing where Hangman will win win then eventually swerve who went to the dark side in this pitch here by you know laying down the chair shots goes on some sort of like redemption arc where he's mm -hmm. like i need to be a good boy because he's a, <laughs> he is a baby face but he, yeah. he went to the dark side there it didn't work so he goes on a long journey back to the title match and then mm -hmm. it all in at wembley i i the second one uh, in august i want uh, swerve versus hangman for the title it's the long game once again hangman i see as being like a sort of drew mcintyre heel yeah coming out of this pitch because yeah he's justified heel he stopped swerve winning the title if he can't be the champion that's all that matters to him so yeah that's me long game pitch oh, for the ending of that match I bloody love that me cheers Andrew I think that's really really good and also I know you said you sort of swerve goes on this redemption right but if he's getting just like caught in the cocaine a clutch what is out of nowhere I feel like that's already it because it has just then been stolen from him yeah. I say stolen from him but it just needs to be a bit more squeaky clean yeah yeah still a little be a bit. badass but just not like the one that uses a chair as much as he did but it feels like it's getting that way innit I like mm. the idea of the roles reversing with Hangman and Swerve. And that at all in would be phenomenal. It's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah, should, I think so be. at this point. Absolutely. So it's a yes from me. That'd Cheers, be delicious. Man. It was one of the hardest matches for me to predict for Revolution. And that, I think, makes everyone come out of it looking stronger and means that Joe's not just a transitional yeah. champion mm. right now. Um, I totally agree that Hangman and Swerve need to have that flip dynamic, especially going to Wembley. Swerve will be the... the the biggest pop of the night. Oh, imagine the Nah this year when he comes right. out. Oh, he'll be oh, throwing all the shit. Insane. So, uh, me. That's a yes from me as well. Thank you, Fraser. Round one of pitch is done. Ding, ding, ding. We should call ourselves Be Pitched. <gasps> like Ooh. the show, Bewitched. Or the band, Bewitched. Bewitched. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is the band, or is there a show? There's a show, Bewitched. There's a show, well. yeah. There is a show as well. There's a band. They're not intertwined, are they? No. 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 Oh, okay. I think Bewitched is about witches, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. the Bewitched is just some lovely Irish people who... Yeah. Ah. Some people say I look like me father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fraser, round two, kick us off. Right, I'm going with some meat, madness, mayhem, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Wardlow and Hobbs and Archer obviously make their way to the ring thinking this is just a regular triple threat meat-filled match because I've not included any other competitors. It's just a straight-up triple threat, mm. or so they think. Tony Khan takes the stage and reveals that this is a literal meat madness match in where they will have to be eating the most amount of meat to oh win. Oh, my goodness, Fraser. He introduces the special <laughs> guest referee, Adam Richmond, from uh, Man vs. Food <laughs> Fame. Oh, oh, nice. The special guest commentator, Guy Fieri. Uh, piles of meat are then ushered to the ring uh, and each man is forced to eat, eat as much meat as they simply can uh, before they pass out. Um, <laughs> a solid back and forth contest ensues, but Wardlow takes the lead and begins to leave the pack behind because he's, well, have you seen the size of him? He's got water on the side. You exactly. Know what I mean? He's yeah. dipping yeah. his hot dog buns and that in water. What a guy. Well, Archer taps out after about five mountains of meat, so he's eliminated, but Hobbs... Interesting you know, booking decision, to, that one, Fraser. Mm, right, yeah, well, I was thinking five is... Uh, you wait till you see the mountains. They're like <laughs> literal mountains. Uh, Hobbs at seven, uh, but Wardlow, not to be outdone, is still eating and gets to his tenth pile of meat when Tony Khan comes to the stage once again. Now that you're nice and warmed up, Wardlow, the match will now finally begin. And out comes former WCW and WWE wrestler Sean Stasiak, <laughs> also known as Meat, who then lifts up Wardlow, who's now bloated and in a meat coma, and powerbombs on at the prone Archer and Hobbs, and then pins both men, or all men, to celebrate as a, as a Meat is All Elite graphic pops up on the screen. Wow. So I, I, I'm pitching Meat. It comes out of this as the as the winner. It's an interesting tactic yes. for the pitchers video because you've not just gone with one silly one. No, I've gone. You've gone two silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the potential of a third silly to come. Possibly, we'll see. Oh, we'll see how this this goes. goes. You are a brave it. man. I know. I know. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a competition I would like to see happen. I want to see a meat eating contest. But I don't know if it's the thing I want to see on Revolution. Maybe a YouTube special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So I'm going to give you... I'll take that. A one of them. I'll take that, yep. I think I'm also going to do that. <laughs> I want For the sole reason that I want to see Sean Stasiak get Wardlow up after uh, Wardlow is full, full of, of meat. meat. Full yeah, on yeah. bloated. He'd weigh about three bills. Uh, yeah, exactly. He would, yeah. yeah. Ten, that's so, ten mountains 
of 10 meat. mountains yeah, worth of meat. Of meat. You can't go wrong with Unspecified that. Unspecified meat, but... Uns- what what kind of what are we? What, it's like that guy on TikTok at the moment that's eating raw chicken every day. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen that. Yeah. What? So like that's that's hypothetically what they're eating. It's not the liver king. It's just I think he's a normalish looking guy. Isn't yeah, he's like, doing not, it until he gets a tummy ache. Is that the dude who's got the big beard? And he, like, that's the liver king. That's liver king. Who got outed as a fraud? Yeah. yeah, but he does actually eat like lamb's testicles yeah, yeah. and whatnot, doesn't he? But there's a guy on TikTok that's eating raw chicken every single day till he gets a tummy ache. I hate TikTok, me. I wish I had a belly like that. <laughs> I had one pack of Tesco chicken and I was done for a month. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. About that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Andrew, get yes. us back on track, please. Okay, okay, okay. So, Will Ospreay is officially, officially all elite and gets a hero's welcome when he makes his way to the ring for his official in-ring debut against Kanosuke Takeshita. Sorry. So despite being a heel, the fans shower Osprey with chants and prayers. And with this being a heel versus heel match, Osprey obviously works more like a face in this one. He's hitting all the big hitters and twisty maneuvers. The two put on an exhibition, but Osprey starts grinning, knowing that he has the better of his teammate, as Takeshita gets visibly more frustrated. The two start laying into one another a bit harder with each passing flurry, with Takeshita becoming more determined to win. Ooh, that naughty boy. Obviously, we can't avoid the elephant in the room, however, that is Don Callis. And the sockless, disgusting man watches on at ringside, his face showing signs of concern. Suddenly, Takeshita finds an opening with a jumping knee, then picks Osprey up and hits a ripcord jumping knee, a bit like a rainmaker, but with the leg. Ooh, yes, delicious. One, two, kick out as the crowd just completely, they become unglued at this point. And Takeshita looks absolutely fuming. But with anger, as Yoda said, comes mistakes. And this gives Osprey enough of an opening to fight back into the match. Osprey is on his game. He avoids all manner of strikes thrown by Takeshita whilst peppering him with quick kicks and jabs. Ooh. Ooh, pepper. Yeah. There's lots of like seasoning and yeah, meat yeah, and all sorts. Yeah, of is, you know that I mean? wasn't my impression. That was <laughs> 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 seasoning. Oh, that's a twi- good, good twist. Uh, suddenly he gets him set up for the Tiger Driver, but his back body dropped out of it by Takeshita. Now Osprey lands on his feet, though, bounces off the ropes, and he hits a hidden blade as Takeshita regroups. One, two, kick out, though. Takeshita kicks out of the hidden blade, you mental man. Osprey is in the groove and realizes he needs to take off his elbow pad to hit a second hidden blade to get the win. But as he takes the pad off, Callis at ringside asks Osprey to, hey, just take it easy on my star pupil, Takeshita, please. Osprey frowns and shouts, nah, what are you doing, bruv? Oh, in a London accent. <laughs> good. Oh, How yeah. do you do it? What are you oh, doing, br- bruv? Hey, doing bruv. bruv. Are you nah. having a giraffe? Hey, shut me down, bruv. Nah, I'll take that's you it. up the apples and pears and Roger your... I don't know. No. That's exactly what he <laughs> says as Callis jumps onto the apron. Now the ref comes over to tell Callis to get the flipping heck away from all this action, allowing Takeshita to wallop Osprey in the Williams and then hit the Northern Lights bomb for the one, two, three. Now Callis, Callis gets into the ring, sorry, and he and Takeshita help Osprey up. And a cockily grinning Takeshita extends his hand sort of half heartedly. Osprey looks fuming in the crowd. He yells, Don't check it, you dafty. He's bloody horrible, him. But Osprey concedes and shakes Takeshita's hand no. anyway. As the three make their way to the back, Callis looks at Takeshita and he gives a little old winky. A little mm. old winky. But no, what does it mean? <laughs> a little old winky. So we get a big win for Takeshita, obviously. Osprey swindled out of a uh, so just swindled out of a win there. And an easy way to transition Osprey into to be in a baby face too because I feel like there's no way he's going to get booed coming into AEW at least for a little while anyway mm. now I said Osprey can take a loss and it'll be fine then he can rack him up leading to a world title shot at all in mm. Ooh. that's but my like big s- fear for my pitch is the mm. fact that Will is being brought in he's, he's featured heavily on all the promotional yes. material so he's going to have a featured match at Wembley yeah. will it be the title one mm, I'm thinking Okada him but oh, oh. Wembley. but I like that pitch I thought mm-hmm. I'm, I'm giving it in the middle though because okay. I don't think I disagree. He should, I don't think he should be losing, but he does need to get away from the Don Callis family as mm. soon as possible uh, upon arriving in AEW. Um, and I think that would would be a good way to do it and have a little bit of tension sowed. But I would have mm-hmm. if he's going to lose, I'd have the full turn, mm. just be on his first night, so that he okay. kick starts being on on dynamite as yeah. this ultra baby face. Oh. As it, it's a yes for me under those circumstances there that you've presented, Andrew. Yeah, because this is Takeshita. He's beaten Kenny, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, oh, right? Several I know. Times. This he's is in, it. 
but they've never really capitalized on that momentum that you would get from beating someone like Kenny Omega it's several been weird. times. It's been weird, hasn't it? <laughs> so when you remember he's pinned Kenny Omega several times, uh, I think it's a fine loss for Osprey to take with the outside interference and whatnot, mm-hmm. and that leads into a natural storyline that takes us forward for many months. So it's yeah. a yards from me. I'm excited to see what happens when, obviously, Kyle Fletcher, Mark Davis comes back as well, and to see the dynamic there. Maybe Callis trying to like keep them on side, but then you get a Callis family. Do you reckon versus... they'll want Mark? Don? Maybe not yeah. at this point. Just seems infatuated with Kyle. Mm. Mark's been forgotten about. He has a bit, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Make him a meat man. Make him a meat. That's a good show. <laughs> meat Make man, him a meat Mark. Man. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to Sting and Darby, who of course are taking on the young Bucks at the weekend. Before the bell, Sting lays out Ric Flair, who is accompanying the Bucks at ringside with a couple of stiff chair shots, because this is Ric Flair. And if there's anything we can learn from Sting's career, it's that Sting should never ever <laughs> trust Ric Flair. Nor should anyone in life, really. But that's besides the point. It's a brilliant match because that's what the young Bucks do, and I think that's why Sting has picked them for his last match because he wanted to have a banger as mm-hmm. his last match, and the Bucks are going to give him that because they are good, although they are arseholes. <laughs> good arseholes. <laughs> Surprisingly, after more near falls than a Johnny Gargano trip down some slippery stairs, Sting pins Matt Jackson to win the match for him and Darby. The shock, the glee, the Bucks are not the champions. Yippee. There's confetti falling. Darby's getting emotional. Sting's emotional. Sting's sons are in the ring. It's everything you're expecting from this part of the show, apart from the fact that Sting and Darby are still the AEW Tag Team Champions, even though now one half of the team is officially going to retire. Sting sits down in the corner of the ring and starts untying his boots, and he places them in the middle of the ring and cuts a promo speaking about his career and his sacrifices. He lays it on thick with two C's, baby, (laughs) when talking about passing the torch to Darby, friendship they've shared it's just been a bloody nice lad is the stinger darby takes the mic and says sting i've done a you here Go on. thank you i didn't just get to meet my hero i got to find out he's a hero worth having it was an honor truly it's been the time of my life yes yeah <laughs> i lifted that from Slay. the players tribune article yesterday that, went live. Yeah. that was the closing part that darby yeah. wrote there but i can see him saying it in a promo as well so i've put it in there mm. darby then starts walking towards Sting to give him the microphone when twat Sting drops him, and Sting's sons start putting the boots to Darby Allen. Because Sting's sons got beaten up by the Young Bucks, and Darby didn't do much to help. I did nothing, mm. did he? Well, he got yeah. beaten up by the Bucks ah, as well. But yeah. I expect more from Darby Allen. That's the, the sort of thing they'll do. But I think that Darby, Sting doing this, and then Sting's sons put the boots to Darby, and the fact they are where they are, and it's a pay per view, it's revolution, and it's hitting at maybe Sting not retiring, he won't get booed. Mm. Yeah, he'll get cheered. I'll be cheering. Stings my boy. I'll be cheering. He's the reason I'm sat here today. He says, "You think it's that easy? I still got a lot left in the tank because, of course, I've got to make a Mark Henry reference here. <laughs> Wembley Stadium, Derby, you little leech. It's showtime, biatch." That's the, the promo Sting cuts there. The only thing that is sure about Sting is that nothing's for sure. Mic drop, seek and destroy plays. <sighs> I'm not ready for Sting to go in a tag team match. I want it to be mm. a big singles bout. I want to have. A bona fide pass of the torch moment, which of course they could still do in the in the, in the tag mm. team match after it's all said and done. I just don't want the young bucks to be tag team mm. champions. That's the main <laughs> the main genesis of this pitch here. But I think having Sting go out at Wembley, it just feels right to me, even though it yeah. does feel right happening this weekend as well. Yeah. It feels righter. Yeah. It right? does. <laughs> I, I agree. You've had him do a Cody Rhodes there, put me boots down, and then ah, I've had you. Yeah. I've had you. Uh, I really like that because I'm with you. And I know Sting in the past has said he doesn't want to have a singles match because, you know, he's getting on and he likes being in the tag team stuff. So he can sort of, you know, pick and choose when he does his spots and everything like yeah. that. Um, but I think you're right. A passing of the torch moment, it feels right, doesn't it? For the fact that obviously you had the flair and sting match at Clash of the Champions. And that was the sort of moment there that really made sting. And then to have that him do that for Derby, I think would be tremendous yeah uh too and in Wembley that would be like the coolest visual ever I reckon yeah uh so it's a it's a yes from me I think yeah it's it's my pitch but better <laughs> so <laughs> so it's a yes from me you've managed to sorry you, I, I forgot a bit he then he pronounces his name as stone, stone thank you and then floats up to the and rafters the, the go yeah, home yeah. journey has just um, begun yeah. I'm, I'm glad you referenced the Mark Henry promo because I was hoping that, that was kind of how what I was going for <laughs> as, as well I, one short of busting out the salmon jacket so yeah. no I'm fully on board with that I think it makes sense for me, I would rather Sting have a singles match to end his career with Darby. Um, and I don't want to see the Bucks as 
tag champs either. So, it's yeah. what we want to happen. It is. That's yes. what the show's about. Because I can see the comments going, no, <laughs> this is fine. It is fine. It but is. it would be better elsewhere. Uh, right, Fraser, I'm scared, but round three. It's not as silly. Okay. <laughs> oh. um, I'm going with the TNT title match between Christian Cage and Daniel Garcia. Now, before the match, Matt Menard has been attacked backstage by the patriarchy. So he's not at ringside on commentary uh, for the title match. Now, it looks as if Christian Cage has Daniel Garcia beat and will walk out with the title because Garcia can't manage, like, Kill Switch or um, Nick Wayne or um, Mother Mother Wayne. Um, <laughs> Shayna Wayne. Shayna Wayne. Uh, so he can't, he can't keep all them at bay. But then you think you know him, please. You get a bit of uh, Adam Copeland get into the ring, and it looks like uh, he's set to even up the numbers. He takes down Kill Switch, takes down Nick Wayne, and then Shayna Wayne... Uh, it looks like he's going to go and attack her. Now, she retreats up the ramp. What? And Christian Cage's music starts to play. Now, Christian is, is sort of distracted in the ring at this point. Christian's music begins to play, and out walks his father, Randy Rezo. Okay? <laughs> That's no way. That's his name. That's his name. That is his wow. name. Randy Rezo. That's a pornography <laughs> man. Oh, oh, yeah. Right? I, would, I had to double check. Joke, that was have his... a little look at Randy Rezo if there is a picture of him. I want to see you big Rand. Randy Rezo. Now, there's not much known about Christian Cage's father, but it's it is his name um he's <laughs> wow he's american um no yeah is he he's like chris jericho Wait, uh, but he's canadian he's canadian well he's born there isn't he um, <laughs> go on the old images randy rezzo there we go randy american rezzo. Father randy rezzo. Rezzo. um <laughs> i don't know if there is a Come photo on, i couldn't find one keep Come talking on, Fraser. Um, we'll, we'll find it so eventually, anyway, as his his dad randy rezzo walks out on stage uh, who then spears martha wayne Martha Wayne, Mother Whoa, Wayne, Mother uh, Wayne. Shayna Wayne, sorry. Um, this, <laughs> oh, that, God, I thought that, that <laughs> Just off camera there, Joel has got a picture of Papa. <laughs> <laughs> um, this has the uh, same effect on Christian Cage as uh, Harry Potter stabbing the diary in Chamber of Secrets does on Tom Riddle. Yeah, it's a niche. Or, it's not very niche. It's not niche, it's, it's just me not seeing anyway, it. Yeah. It's, it's like destroying his whole life in the middle of that ring at that time. While this is happening, Daniel Garcia has recovered from all the attacks. He hits a kill switch on uh, Christian Cage and manages to beat him for the TNT title. Um, Christian Cage can't believe what's happened, sort of escapes up the ring to sort of have a word with his dad, who then slaps him across the face and tells him, his son, you're dead to me. Christian is embarrassed and in tears as his dad celebrates with his favorite son, Edge and Daniel Garcia. And then that's the TNT title passed on. Christian crying at the top of the ramp as his family is in tatters. There's so much potential for this storyline. Learning that yeah. Christian's father obsession yeah, yeah. is because of his own daddy his own issues. Daddy issues. Mm. It's like a Batman story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, exactly. That, exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> it's a yes from me. Randy, Who was yeah. spearing Shane away again? Oh, that. Randy Rezzo. Randy, so Randy oh. Rezzo. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'd hey, assume oh. Randy Rezzo would be 80 odd. Um... I would place, yeah, I would say, I'm, I was thinking 70s. 70s, yeah, yeah, yeah 60s. It's 70s. not a good spear. It's, um, it might be. Well, look at Sting. He's 65, could, could be, yeah, yeah. So he's, he spears her at the top of the ramp, um, which is, it will cause his Christian to sort of have a breakdown in the middle of the ring. I kind of like the way that that's been spinned on him instead. Yeah. Like the, the, the dad issues stuff there. Oh, that is. Intriguing. I think it's it? by far your strongest pitch. Oh, yeah. I would agree. That's why I kept it all. <laughs> I like that. I like that one a lot. Uh, so it gets a yes from me. Thank you. I reckon if he's like, right, if he is in his 70s or whatever, how old Samuel Jackson now? Because he's like in his 70s, 70s? or 80s and he's yeah. about 50. What, what, no, because then Christian's he can do the dad... spear. <laughs> Can't he? He's saying if Christian's dad's not free, just bring Samuel Jackson. <laughs> that's that's good, good if you wanted to. It's Randy Resson. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like it. That was good. Yeah. Thank you. Right. My final one uh, is also about the Sting and Darby Allen one. Let's go on a ride, everybody. Let's go on a... Let's go got on a long one, <laughs> everybody. Let's go on a journey. <laughs> it's not that long, all right? Uh, it's, it's, an, it's an overview of history for Sting. Uh, right. Main event time is Sting and Darby Allen take on the Young Bucks in Sting's final match. Before the match, the traditional Darby Allen short movie plays, but it shows Sting and Darby sitting in an empty cinema... The screen kicks in. Uh, sorry, the screen kicks into life and shows footage from throughout Sting's career. Thank you, WWE, for licensing it, obviously. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, we see Sting and the Ultimate Warriors, the Blade Runners. We see Sting versus Vader, Muta, Luger, Hogan, and we see Sting and Flair in Greensboro. The camera cuts back to show Flair sat next to Sting and Darby in the seats with an H-boy asking what time it is. 
Darby in surface sting paint turns to the stinger as Sting says for the final time, it's showtime. Whoa. Whoa. I know, right? Shamon. <laughs> we get the classic Sting music. So do you remember the turbocharged one? WCW He's a man one. Named it's Sting. Like, yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as Crow Sting and his uh, grand red jacket, Surfer Darby and Ric Flair come down the aisle. Already in the ring are the Young Bucks, wearing gear nodding to Hollywood Hogan and the NWO. How have you got Ric Flair on Sting's side? That's a big... How do we? Mm. I'm just saying we don't know what we don't know what's playing out, do we? Well, he was in the locker room last I, week. He was in the locker room, but what what was what was being said? Who knows? I want you to know because he's walking well, we'll sting and that's out. A well, we'll find out, <laughs> won't we? So uh, yeah, so the young bucks are wearing gear, nodding to Hollywood Hogan and the NWO, whilst also wearing their blood splattered jackets. Disgusting. And then the announcer: the next match is for a one fall. And has a 30-minute time limit, and it's for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Now, Sting rolls back the years as he has throughout his AEW run. So we get Sting a splash, his drop kicks, more chops than a butcher's window, everybody. The match rumbles on, each team taking their turn on the front and back foot. Eventually, Darby gets taken out to the floor, leaving Sting in the ring with Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. Sting woos one last time as Greensboro comes unhinged, but the Bucks hit him with an EVP trigger. One kick out at one. Are you mental? <laughs> uh, you certainly are, Sting. <laughs> Sting rallies up once more as Darby gets to his feet, climbs the turnbuckle, and leaps back into the match and takes down the Bucks. Darby catches clotheslines Matthew Jackson to the floor as Sting gets Nick up for the Scorpion death drop. Bang! Sting takes Nicholas down, but before he can go for the pin, the bell rings, everyone. No. Oh. The 30-minute time limit has expired. The match is a draw. Boo! <laughs> the crowd boos. <laughs> the crowd boos as Sting looks frustrated on his knees. The boos turn into woos, though, as Flair gets into the ring, yelling at Sting to get back on his feet and fight on. Flair grabs the mic and yells, Sting, you son of a bitch! Are you going to go out on your knees? Think back to this very city. Clash of the Champions, 1988. Where is that Sting? That Sting that took the Nietzsche boy to the very limit and changed the course of wrestling history. Sting gets to his knees and comes face to face with Flair and beats his chest like a gorilla as Flair turns his attention to the books. I'm not having a repeat of 1988. You two have been throwing your weight around here. So if you have the power, you say you do, then you'll restart this damn match. The crowd are going absolutely potty at this point as the Jacksons whisper to one another. Turn to the timekeeper and nod with Justin Roberts announcing that there must be a winner we get a few more minutes of action. The Bucks hitting Darby with an indie taker to take him out of the action and once again bring it down to Sting versus the Bucks. Matthew and Nicholas stand either side of a tired-looking Sting when suddenly Flair gets into the ring as the crowd starts murmuring a little bit. Mm -hmm. The Bucks hold up a too sweet as Ric Flair smiles. <gasps> Don't but do it, Andrew. Ric Flair instead raises those famous four fingers at the Jacksons as he and Sting unload chops into the Jacksons' chest one last time. Eventually, Age gets the better of the WCW legends with Flair decked by Nicholas as Matthew superkicks Sting in the mush. Darby gets to his knees in time to see the Bucks crush Sting with a super kick parte. One, two, three. The Bucks are the tag team champions once more. Now the Jacksons lift their titles, give Sting a crotch chop and make their way to the back. Darby, Sting and an obviously bleeding Ric Flair because of course he's bleeding are left alone in the ring with Sting taking off his boots as the crowd give the icon a standing ovation. That's it. If this was a predictions video, I'd be saying, Andrew, that's, that's a very yeah. clever that. Yeah. I reckon that could happen. But this is what we want to happen. It's what we want to happen. I don't want to see the Young Bucks leave as champions. <laughs> you don't want to see them leave as <laughs> champions? Just based off that, I'm going to give you a heart a no. <laughs> well, we, well, that's fair enough. That's fair. My, my only thing was I was I was umming and ahhing whether to prolong Sting's final match. Because I know it's obviously been advertised as such as well. It's wrestling. It's yeah. wrestling. Exactly. It's wrestling. It's wrestling. But I, I think maybe historically for him and for sort of everything that happened in his career at that match at Clash of Champions, I was like, I'll I'll keep it here. I'll let it I'll let it die here uh, in a nice way. So that's I mean, what that's what I went with. If he's not doing a false retirement and staying on like our pitches, then as much as I don't want to see the Bucks with the belts, I think that would probably be the best way to, to go about the whole situation mm. and makes the 
Buck's even more hateable. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm going to give it a yes because I, I do kind of want to see certain aspects of that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Go on then. Not Rich. all of it though. Go, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add some steaks to the Meat oh. Madness match. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I am. I just had to put the pun in there. Uh, as we're sat here, currently on Wednesday morning before this week's Dynamite, it is just Wardlow versus Powerhouse Hobbs versus Lance Archer. Mm-hmm. I would like to see Brody King, Kill Switch, and John Silver added to make it a, a six pack of meaty sausages. Ooh. I also want to see the six lads just batter each other in a big stupid hoss off, the only kind of hoss off that massive meaty lads can do. We know what we're talking about here. At the end of this hoss off, I'd like to see Wardlow win in dominant fashion. I don't care who takes the fall, just as long as Wardlow is the the guy who's looking big and tall and strong and meaty at the end of the match. I thought he cut one hell of a promo, as we said earlier, on last week's Dynamite, where no lies were spotted. And because of that, when the rest of the undisputed kingdom come down to the ring to celebrate, because they're all doing sweet old bugger else on the card, I want to see Wardlow flatten them all. Kill them all! Don't kill, just punch them. Um, (laughs) But crucially, I want to see Adam Cole escape before Wardlow gets to him, mainly because he's injured and I don't want to see him more injured, but also because I want to create a sense of, ooh, I can't wait to see Wardlow when he gets his hands on that little prick. Mm. (laughs) An eventual match between the pair will happen down the line. I'm pitching Wardlow to break away from this faction, which so far has been as generic as a slice of bread. Yep. That hasn't even been buttered nor toasted. Uh, Wardlow is more than just the henchman role he's been given in this group. And personally, I'm not a fan of the whole, if he wins the title, he's going to give it to me shtick that Adam Cole was peddling yeah. mm. on the debut promo for the Undisputed Kingdom. Stop cooking, my boy! I've ended this um, this uh, pitch with. <laughs> C-U-C-K-I-N-G, not yep. cooking him because he's meat. Um, so yeah, Wardlow getting away from the Undisputed Kingdom after winning a big stupid hoss off. That's the final pitch. I know it's not the best. No, but it's what I want to happen. It, <laughs> it's the best thing to do to get Wardlow out of that faction that's yeah. doing nothing for him. Um, and it, it seems like, the, it just feels like they've done nothing. They I haven't, haven't done it. Even the Roderick Strong stuff, it's sort of just been like, oh, we'll have it at Revolution. Where it's, it's yeah, I, I think that's a, a yes from me because it's it gets him out with that, but also keeps him strong. Yeah. Now, my thing was going to, I was going to m- maybe say no initially because I was like, I do want to see Wardlow get the belt and then have the thing with Adam Cole where it's like, oh, will he pass the title or not? But I think you made a compelling point there where actually I kind of do just want to see it happen. Like because if they don't capitalize on that momentum and they just have Wardlow going off for ages being like, I'm going to get the belt and then I'm going to give it to you. And then it just loses any sort of sense of excitement, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But if Wardlow does exactly what he said last week and just goes straight for it, does it, breaks away i think that would be much more impactful for him and his character rather than getting lost in the shuffle of some group again yeah and i'm thinking second half of this yeah he's got to be contending having at least one match for the world title yeah yeah second half of this year after wembley's out the way and swerve and hangman have done yeah that, so. definitely I, I think we need to get there sooner rather than later this so is your the pitch last does that saloon, yeah yeah it does feel like that doesn't it yeah. now because now he's said everything that he said it does feel like that if nothing gets capitalized on then that might be it for him It'll just cut the same promo again and again and again yeah, every sort yeah. of six months when they've given up. Because <laughs> it is, it's just it's the same story every time. Something always gets in the way, whether it's like just an injury yeah. or the MGF situation. I have, there's other examples out there, but it just feels, it, it needs to happen. It does. It does, but it just doesn't feel like uh, or the folk in the title contention, the title contender picture, uh, he can beat right now because of that faction. So yeah, it's sort of, uh, it's a bit harsh. <sighs> it's weird, isn't it? Because it doesn't feel like, almost like he should be in that picture either with yeah. what's going on at the moment no it's it's a strange one for him you have it? to get there's a secondary title or two he can go after yeah yeah so no quite, that's true it's quite an essential weekend for him then to actually make sure that he comes out strong and yeah, <laughs> yeah big time yeah it would be quite an yeah. essential weekend but there we go that's our nine pitches for revolution 2024 let us know what your pitches are down below in the comments section how are you feeling towards the event itself lads are you looking forward to it I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be me and Tom on reactions this weekend. Uh, our predictions will be out on the channel tomorrow. I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's been the first sort of, well, we've not had a pay per view since January. Yeah, January start of January. Mm. Um, uh, so I'm yeah, I'm, I'm very hyped, hyped for it. World's End it was. World's End mm. so start of the end New of December. Eve. Yeah. Was it New Year's Eve? Eve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. won it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I f- I, at first, I was like, oh, the card's not that big, and then I looked on Wikipedia, <laughs> it's already matches, nine yeah. matches, yeah. and I'm like, oh, we've still got two, three more shows to go before. I hope it doesn't get to 14, 15 like it yeah, normally does. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, the sting should be given an it's hour. It's quite strong as it is now, yeah. so I'd kind of leave it at that. I'm excited to see Roddy Strong take that title off Orange Cassidy. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. And then the Undisputed King will stand. 
hands. Yeah, and that that's black t-shirt. It. That's the one. Looking hard and bland. Yes. I think it's got the shamans for a very good card. Yeah, yeah. and he's got the right mix of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. That's analysis, right? That's it for the pitches video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time for WrestleMania pitches. Oh, bloody hell! Woo. <laughs> Why is it Woo. spooky? Why is it spooky? Woo. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>